Hello everyone, as you know, I just finished filming my Kill Switch review, and now it's time for Pandora, being the final character in Series 3, it's only fit that I do something like this. Welcome to another playtime, if you did not know, my name is Riley, of course, and I have no idea how I'm about to film this. So, if you know me, you know I do unscripted videos, so if you don't like that, you can go ahead and click off. But with that being said, I thought I would show you all of the boxes, since this is a small wave, I consider it small compared to the other waves, it makes sense because I don't have much room for any more boxes on this desk, so since I have enough room for Series 3, this is why we're doing it like this. So... I would consider this wave definitely worth buying. I'm just going to say that right off the bat. If you don't mind the flaws in Action Force figures themselves with the plastic and things like that. If you don't mind the articulation or the details or lack thereof articulation and details on some cases. Then obviously pick them up. But I'm not here to tell you to buy them or don't buy them. That's just my opinion. So, here's the lineup. You get four core, well, yes, four core figures. And then you get two troop builders and an exclusive repaint. Well, I don't know if it's exclusive. You're going to have to comment below if it's actually exclusive. It may be a Valiverse.com exclusive. But it is still a repaint. So, here we go. On the left, we have Eclipse, we have Pandora, then Kill Switch, then Steel Brigade, and then the Bloody Pandora variant. So, starting off here, the four core figures are all in a cartoon style. They are all a little bit different here. We have Eclipse and Kill Switch sort of have a, their own, and then it looks like the other two are sort of lighter in some cases, but they're all same art style. There is only one figure in this lineup, except for, of course, the other one. Um, that is Pandora, that is not part of the Action Force team, which is noted by that right there. And then this one has nothing on it because it is a realistic, and I can't remember, but I think this was all Bobby, so pretty sure it's realistic artwork instead of the cartoon style. So, this wave as a whole, I would say... There's seven figures, but really there's eight. Um, there's four core figures, but really there's five. This is, and I'm not sure if I already said this, I probably just said this, but I don't really want to edit and go back um, and cut this if I did. So bear with me here. This is one of what I would consider one of two waves that is a troop building wave, the special deployment series being the other wave that I would consider a mostly troop building wave. Waves 1 and 2 completed 2 and the special deployment series. Uh, I can't speak. I'm excited. <laughs> Anyways, what I was trying to say is even though series 2 was breaking down into two different partial waves, series 1 and 2 completed, are both core figure dominant waves with named characters that have faces, except for the bad guys like the Swarm and the Garrison Cavalry, but most of the characters have actual like faces in the wave. And then in this, we get... It's a really even amount, but more troop building dominant wave. So the reason I say this might as well be an eight figure wave instead of seven is because for the female steel brigade, we get the 
commander head and the regular one. So really, if you want multiple commanders and multiple regulars, you're going to buy two of them anyways. So what you would normally buy, say if you wanted to have four steel brigades, you would now be buying eight if you wanted to have four commanders to go with your normal steel brigade standard issues. That being said, this is a great way for completionists and to have alternate versions of the troop builders because we've already seen the Delta Trooper and we've already seen the Spec Ops Trooper and the Steel Brigade in the male versions in other series, but we are now getting the female versions of those characters. So that makes me happy. The only thing that I hope we get in the future from the females is maybe a urban and riot trooper the ones that we have not gotten restocked on valiverse.com which i never got my hands on i only have the spec ops and the delta troopers i wanted the urban and i really wanted the riot trooper because he's all blue and now with the spec ops gear pack i wanted to make sort of a swat member like a blue and black look for them there. So it would be cool if we could get some female versions of some other figures. And maybe some female swarms. Which I'm sure we will get in the future. Now that the body mold is established. I'm sure we'll get females of every troop builder. That's just a guess. Obviously nothing confirmed or even rumored at this point. But if you made it this far. We are 7 minutes in. Thank you for putting up with my bullshit for one. And two, now we're going to actually get into the characters rather than the boxes. So, what you've been waiting for, we have Pandora. I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys know I am not opening the bloody Pandora variant simply because I only have one of them. If I had two, I would open one. At the time of buying, um, I think I spent... Roughly the same amount I normally spend on Action Force hauls, which is around 160 to 190. I think I spent 187 or something like that dollars on this wave just to get one of every figure to review one of every figure. So since I was already getting Pandora, the non bloody variant, I figured. I don't really want to open the bloody variant. Now granted it looks great and I'm sure you guys would love for me to open her but she's exactly the same as the regular version. She comes with no different accessories except for the blood paint. That's it. Just the added splatter along the weapons and the figure herself. She doesn't come with any alternate colored accessories, no different paint deco guns or anything like that. So there's no real reason for me to open her other than so you guys can get maybe a closer look. But if you really want a closer look, if you bug me enough, I might actually just have to buy another one because she looks great in the box and I would like to see the the paintwork outside the box in hand, but I'm not going to do it because for one, I don't want to devalue the figure, not because I plan on reselling it, but just because I don't really want to open it. So we're going to go ahead and show you the sides of the box once more that I've already shown you, but just side by side, here is the realistic bloody artwork and then the cartoon comic style artwork and that's pretty much it for that. You don't even need to see the rest of that box. You already know. And I believe this has the same file card. We'll take a look at that here in a second. We'll just look at the back here in a second. But first, let's focus on the bloody box. I remember when Bobby was talking about creating the box. Uh, barely, but I do remember some of that conversation he was having with, I think it was Ryan... And I remember him saying the white background, something about the white background, um, about it making it look, or making the blood stand out more, or something like that, 
on a white background and I'm glad they chose a white background. If this is the only figure in the line that ever has a white background, I would be happy with that because man, this is, I don't know how to explain it. It looks great. The blood is different colored. Um, some of it's darker, some of it's more of an orange peachy tone there. The box is essentially the exact same as any other Action Force box in terms of the layout. I like the background even behind the figure is not left out. It's still all white with all the blood. You can see the stand hiding back there too, so you already know she's coming with that. Here's the bottom of the box for no children under 5, even though this is rated 13 and up, which is weird. But now the back of the box. I like that artwork once more. She's not really bloody. This is what I find odd. The realistic, still cartoon, but realistic cartoonish style of her artwork here. She has no blood on her, but of course the blood texturing continues to the back. She comes with three action force or three action points. So here's the normal box, and here is the bloody variant. And yeah, you guys already know the bloody one is better, but the difference being the most notable difference being the color of the box. The file cards are completely different, even though I think they say the same thing. I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure they do. She is essentially a really badass woman who I have not read the comics, but I'm assuming is very important to the storyline um, as far as antagonists go. It is a little odd the way they do the photo for this, that she is the bad guy, but she is like, like, don't they all look like they could all just be part of Action Force together? Like, if you didn't know the storyline or anything like that, and you just had the toys, like, they look like they would go together. Like, she would be sort of on the Action Force team as well. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom. Hopefully you guys can see the file card better and read it for yourselves. And let me know, because I don't really, can't really tell if it has more or less text or if things are different or not. They look the same to me, so let me know if that's actually different or not. But, yeah, so that's all there is to say about the boxes, except for her coming with one more action point on the bloody variant since she comes with three instead of two whoever has multiple of these so currently core figures come with two then your gear packs and your um troop builders that are the cheaper figures come with one so if you really love troop builders, then every time you buy one of those in a gear pack, you're getting two. Or you could just buy a bunch of these and get two action points. Or you can just... Now, the fastest way to get action points is also the most expensive way. Because marketing. But if you want to just grind action points, as I would say, um, then buy a bunch of bloody Pandoras and ruin the stock for everybody else I guess because she's the only figure that I know of that comes with three action points I don't own any other repaints or exclusives so I'm not sure about the wasp raider or anything like that and I don't know why I pushed these so far back but I hope you guys enjoyed this segment we're gonna go ahead and open the regular Pandora do a comparison with the rest of the lines and a couple other figures and then wrap this up this is probably going to be a really long video, so if you guys stay for the whole thing, you're awesome. But, yeah, that's all there is to say. We're going to go ahead and open that now. Here she is out of the box. And while I was opening her up, I was thinking about some stupid things like I normally do. And I told 
my ex that the only women I would cheat on her with was the figures from series three. And, uh, of course, she said good or some shit like that and then ended up cheating on me by talking to someone else and then dating them, breaking up with me to date them. But we're not going to get into that because that's stupid and that's not action force, right? I can't get her to stand too well in this pose, but I kind of want to do a little sort of stance because I think she looks better with her hands up. I'm having problems there. So this is Pandora. She's the most unique figure in this wave because of her, um, her build. She has really unique hair, which are kind of pointed and a little sharp. And she has tattoos, which give me Viking vibes. She has a really unique vest with pistol holsters, and it's sort of, un the whole design is unique to her character. She has a unique sheath for the knife, uh, the whole belt situation, even though it's a little warped. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that or not, but. And then her color scheme, she has that tank top, which she's the only figure in this wave that doesn't have, um, she has no sleeves because she has a tank top. That's what I was trying to say. And the tank top is unique to her as well. It's gray, which I like. I kind of want to take this vest off and take the belt off and just have sort of a blue jean tank top look. Even though I know these probably aren't supposed to be just blue jeans, but they do give me blue jean vibes. Even though they do have all the padding that blue jeans would not have. Unless they're just combat pants that are blue. But her wrapped hands are unique to her. There's... Is that shading? Or am I just getting my figure dirty? I'm not sure. Let me know. So there's that side, and then that side's all... I hope that's shading. And me not, you know, doing that to her. I'm not too sure, because I didn't open the bloody variant. But she has different colored boots than any other figure. Different colored... Like, her whole character is different from any other figure so if you want to troop build some sort of casual women characters you can do that with her her pants and her tank top fortunately my phone died while i was speaking and i was trying to finish that before it died reason being it's an s22 ultra and the battery is probably the one thing that i hate about it because it is so powerful and so great at recording that when you use it the way it is intended its battery suffers we are on my next best thing which is my note 8 so i'm sure the quality has dropped significantly but it is what it is will make do and hopefully you guys don't hate me for it so while i was dealing with that um i obviously could have let my other phone charge but i'm not gonna sit here and wait for it to charge up enough to turn on um so yeah we're gonna finish this review and i can't get the framing right because this phone is weird but oh well you're just going to have to bear with me here. Like, normally this would be fine, but it only has one time zoom. And for some reason, there we go. She was completely out of frame at the top. So back to what I was saying, which I don't remember what that is. So I went ahead and stripped the outerwear off and then added this uh, red scarf here. And I think this is... I don't want to say sexy, but it is certainly a good look for the character, and I like the idea that you could reuse almost this entire body. Well, you could reuse the entire body if you get rid of the tat, uh, the tattoo tampo there, but yeah, you can reuse her and just have her for anything, like if you wanted a biker female character, the tank top, and, and, you know, the pants, they work, 
and it has a nice painted belt there, a little sculpting for the buckle, and then the boots, like I said. So it works for numerous things that I can't really think of and don't really want to spend too much time on. But the tank top is a nice touch, um, rather than just having that same combat shirt over and over again. I'm glad she doesn't. I'm sure at some point she would wear something more combat ready, maybe. Or she might just stick with her vest and things like that. But oh well. Um, I don't really know what else to talk about here. Her design is really good. I also really like her head sculpt. Um, pretty sure Bobby thinks that Pandora is the sexiest female in the line. Maybe that's because she's completely his design, I don't remember. But the scars work. I like that they're not painted because it looks like they've healed. If they were painted, it would almost look like... Well, first off, I don't know if they would do the paint well or not. But it would almost look like... Kind of like the Heath Ledger, the Ledger Joker scars where they're really bright and uh, maybe not completely healed up. Like they were more recent. She also has a single earring that's green and hard to see um, on my camera. Which is another dimple indention scar thing there. And her hair is three different colors it appears with the red and sort of yellow and white so it's more like i don't know if you would call that blonde with with uh red highlights at the top or if you would call it red with blonde highlights don't quote me i'm not a hair person there's white tips and then a little white mixed in throughout and then to further that on the side i noticed her, uh, the inside of her hair is completely white, and I do not like that. I think that that kind of makes it look unfinished. I'm not sure what they were going for when they thought they should just leave it. Um, and also, she has uh, what I think is an imperfection. A little bit of red by my thumb right there that I don't like. It's a deep red. It's not really like the orange color. And I tried to look on my other figure in the background... On the bloody version and see if it was there but i just i didn't see it so all that being said pandora is definitely a pick if you want to get a nice female badass character um can't really this quality sucks there's one last sort of close-up i'm gonna zoom back out this uh this camera setup isn't working for me here um too well so sorry about that um it's definitely not level, so I hope whoever's watching isn't holding your phone straight because this is level and this is how it's sitting. So sorry about that. I can't figure this shit out. Somebody more technological than me would have to do that. We're just going to go ahead and display. I can't zoom out 0.6 like I usually do on my other phone. So we're at one time zoom right now. I don't really want to put her accessories back on, but I do appreciate them. Um, she doesn't come with any backpack or anything, and I wish more figures would come with backpacks for some reason. I just kind of... Why did I just put that on like a ring? Somebody let me know. Um, I just wish they would come with more backpacks. So honestly, the backpacks for me would be a great storage space. I ran out of space in my weapons tin to put figures and accessories. Um, I could add more weapons, but the weapons that come with figures, I like to keep with the rest of that figure's accessories and then have the generic weapons grouped together all in one pack rather than just all weapons in one pile. I like to have things more organized. So um, I don't really want to... Like, I have more space technically, but I don't really want to use the space that I have because that would mess up my organization. So here is her melee, well, one of her melee weapons. This is her knife. I'm not too sure what this is, but I like it. It has a textured handle there and some grooves, even a groove on the back of the blade, which 
Really, Alexa? Anyways, um, could be a seatbelt cutter or something else more important. I like the shape of it. Not sure what it's called in real life, so someone let me know down below. I do appreciate the paint, the silver paint for the blade, and I know it fits in her hands because all of their weapons fit in their hands because this is Action Force. I want to see how tight the fit is for that, and it looks like this is not a great... Like, that's not going to fall out, but it's not easy to put in either. I'm kind of scared to force that, but I like that. It's, I'm tugging on it, and it's not coming out. Um, wow. Um, it's not going to fall out like the other vest, the Steel Brigade vest style knife will. So that's good. There we go. I'm sure you can hear the clicking on camera of me pushing that in there. I like this as being a separate piece. It looks warped. Mine is a little off here. Almost like one side's higher than the other and I don't know little tendencies you see with soft plastic tends to warp which is why nobody likes Hasbro's weapons so here is her I'm calling it a scythe I'm not sure if that's exactly what it is it also looks like an ice pick but I do like it I wish she came with two of these for some reason just because I think that would fit her character um I like the the idea of her being more of a melee wielder, and since she comes with an SMG, and I can't get that in, she comes with an MP7 rather than a rifle or a bigger weapon. Like, she prefers to be more mobile. She doesn't come with a big vest, just one that can hold the pistols, and I'm struggling with these tight ass hands some see only a few things I dislike about Action Force but it's in there so it ain't going anywhere now but I like it now if she came with a gritting teeth face or a screaming face or even a smile that would be a lot more menacing and I would like it more but Seeing her now holding a weapon, she's definitely, she looks better with a weapon in her hand, that's for sure. I do wish she might have came with a different head, like I said, with a different facial expression or a different facial expression and maybe some swooshed hair, a different hairstyle. Uh, I would don't really care to see her with a ponytail but maybe some like blowing in the wind hair or a different hair color even. Um, since she clearly has fake hair, let's just say she does what every other girl does and changes her hair color once a day. Um, I would like to see her with maybe some blue and green or purple or any other color that you can think of. That would be weird, but you know. So here's her sidearm. She comes with two of these. I went ahead and put one of them in there so you guys could see. It won't. There we go. That's the focus. Um, what it looks like in the holster. This is a weapon we've seen before, just in black. I don't know the name of it. Not sure. Kind of looks like a Glock, but kind of looks like an MP. I'm not sure. Like I said, we're gonna put that. Thank you. My light just died. Now it's incredibly dark in here. One second. I am. Terribly sorry. Well, at least you guys know one thing about me. Don't ever ask me to produce anything for you because it won't go too well. That's now on the charger. This won't go. There we go. I'm struggling today. I need a nap. Let's just let's go with that. That's my excuse. I need a nap. So here's that. For some reason... I just thought of, I wonder what it would look like if these were blue, if like the handles of these weapons were blue to match her pants. I think that would be cool, or even just gray, just some different colors. That'd be pretty cool. Now the last weapon she comes with, I'm pretty sure it's the same weapon that comes with the Republic Guards, the female Republic Guards, um, is this MP7 with a suppressor, extended mag, and a sight that I don't know what it's for. 
so that is her primary even though you could probably just throw this somewhere and pretend she doesn't even have one and that she uses her pistols 90% of the time and the other 10% of the time she's ripping people's throats out with her melee weapons and that's how she's going to be in my reality to me. Um, yeah, I think she looks very menacing right now. So, let's go ahead and compare her to her other Series 3 counterpart figures. So, here's Kill Switch, which I'm sure her and Kill Switch probably get into fights quite often. If they're even on the same op. And man, these figures suck at standing. I am... If I could change one thing about these characters right now, it would be that they they suck at standing. The, I mean, you see, I'm finessing the crap out of this figure right now. Trying to move her legs subtly enough to get her to stand. She's probably still going to fall over. Here is the Delta Trooper with the Delta Gear Pack helmet on. I like that. Even though she doesn't have, we're going to move her accessories real quick. Even though she doesn't have the other accessories that the Delta Trooper comes with, like the vest or the backpack or anything, the backpack does work for her um, as well, but the helmet does look good. Here is the Spec Ops Trooper, and I'm going to try to back this out a little bit. Normally, this is when I would switch over to the... 0.6 zoom so you guys could get a better cinematic view of the figures. Here is the female steel brigade, which I currently have dirt on her from taking them outside. But here is the female steel brigade with the commander head, and she has one of the weapons from the Crimson Shadow 10. And here is a, another Steel Brigade with the standard issue accessories. And then the final figure in the wave being Eclipse. And for some reason, I like Eclipse the most because of her color scheme, maybe. I don't really know. I like the tan a lot. Um, she won't stand either for some reason. I'm really sorry, guys. I could make 10,000 cuts and pretend this video was perfect like most YouTubers do, but I don't really want to be fake like that. I kind of want to show you the reality of me recording the video. So this is Series 3. This is all of the figures that you get when you buy one of each, like I did. And honestly, I'm itching to buy multiples of the Spec Ops. And honestly, I would love to have multiples of every Action Force figure. But I cannot afford that. And you guys aren't going to donate to me. Because I'm not going to ask you to donate to me. Because that would be rude. So, here's Blowback for reference. And then, if you can kind of see him, here is Desert Rat. I can't really zoom out too much more than this because this is going to go off the table like right now I'm having to hold this. So to wrap this video up, before it gets any more chaotic and low quality here, thank you all for watching. I hope you had a great day. This is my final video for now, maybe until a week or two for now. And then I'll have some more figures coming in. Well, really just one figure, but multiples of them. Um, so you guys probably already know what that's going to be based on what I just said. But if you made it this far, you are a champion. I love you guys. And I hope that more of you subscribe and uh, watch future videos. So, good day.